Hi guys, welcome back to Wildebeard Reviews. Tonight we're going to talk about Nightwing issue 81, written by Tom Taylor with artwork from Bruno Redondo. Guys, uh, you know every single issue I absolutely gush over uh, over this current uh, run of Nightwing with this current creative team. This issue is no different. I absolutely love this one. We have just heroics for the pure sake of heroics. We have villainy for the pure sake of villainy. We have corrupt officials or so. We believe we have... Uh, crime there in in bloodhaven we have the batman family doing what the batman family does it's incredible i love it the artwork along the way is absolutely incredible it's perfectly paced um there's enough of each particular story to keep the the, the flow moving no one gets to see gets the spotlight over the other nothing seems forgotten it's just a perfect comic this is truly one of the most refreshing uh series that i've been reading in a long time uh, especially on the dc side over on the marvel side we've got all the x-men stuff that you can see here uh, behind me. That's been amazing, but in DC, this to me has been the most refreshing series of the ones that I'm reading. There might be something else out there that's better I'm not reading, but this is is damn good. So, you guys know, and I've said this before on the channel, as much as I love Batman, I love the Batman family that much more. I love the character of Batman, Bruce Wayne, but I love all the ancillary characters and all of the other characters that have grown up around him. Nightwing, Robin, Red Robin, Red Hood, Batman, girl all of them and, and this book puts them in in the forefront because it, it might say nightwing on the cover and a lot of the plot is driven around him but we've got barbara gordon there as oracle we've got tim drake tim drake back as robin hanging around with nightwing and it feels like that 90s 2000s nightwing series again and i've said i know i've said that in my reviews for this one as well and just continues the trend here plus he's got the puppy and it's amazing and then there's a big reveal at the end of this book which we're going to get to so I, i'm loving this series this is uh, aside from the x-men stuff this is my that what's right there number two on my favorite books that i'm i'm reading right now and this even beats out some of the x-men stuff probably about half of it because as much as i love that uh the x-men some of those books aren't the greatest but this book is just chef's kiss perfect so let's go ahead here and get into all the perfection that is nightwing issue at 81 and the perfection that is uh that tom taylor and bruno redondo's run is shaping up to be all right, so we open up here with Bloodhaven at City Hall. I'm guessing uh, earlier that day or around the same time as the Nightwing story that's going on right now. We have Mayor Z uh, Mayor Melinda Zuko getting sworn in, and she is saying, uh, "I do so uh, solemnly swear and faithfully uh, to faithfully and impartially support the Constitution and to serve the citizens and uphold the laws of the city of Bloodhaven." They say, "Congratulations, Madam Mayor," and he says, and she says, "Thank you. It's a great honor." Honor. And then this dude over here, Commissioner McLean, says, We have another formality we need to attend to, and I love this. I laughed out loud. When I read this, they walk out or they walk into the next room, and it's Blockbuster and all of his cronies looking like the Last Supper there with champagne. And the dude literally tries to hand her a briefcase full of money, like she's been the mayor officially for 30 fucking seconds. And they're already like, Here's a briefcase full of money, you're gonna do what we tell you. I love it, it's incredible, it's it's hilarious. And she, and I love it, she flatly refuses the money. And he's like, What am I gonna do with this? And she's like, Just put it into account and wire them into you. Come on. What is, the, what is this, the 90s with your cash? It's hilarious. So uh, Blockbuster here says, take a seat uh, and tell us your plan for for my city. And she says, my plan, a Blockbuster, is to make it uh, make us all much wealthier and to uh, to extend your power beyond the city. So, um, But to do so in a way that builds up on the great work that you've already done uh, I, I have no interest in burning things down. So there we go. Uh, Mayor Melinda Zuko already in bed with um, uh, Blockbuster and the Maroney crime family. So yeah, Bloodhaven is as, as Bloodhaven does. As much as things change, they, they stay the same. So from there, we go to Nightwing as he's about to face down our new villain of this run, Heartless. And uh, as we saw in the last issue of this tent city that the, uh, the homeless kids of Bloodhaven were 
living in has been put to the torch and that is what uh, the fire is and then we get something very unvillain like um, he puts out the fire so the kids some of the kids can get away very interesting but we'll circle back around to that also it seems like this guy is immediately is already more than he seems uh, because Barbara can't see what he's got going on from uh, the camera that's in Dick's suit he she says his clothes are covered in infrared lights they're blinding your camera uh, I don't know what you're up against so it already tells us that he's got some level of tech um, aside from the little um, heart grabber thing uh, thing that he has so he lets the kids go, puts out the fire a little bit, uh, and then Nightwing is like, what are you doing? Like, that's not a bad guy thing. And he says, I don't want to watch them die, I just want to watch them run. I've heard of you, I was hoping we'd meet, but Nightwing, Bloodhaven's guardian angel, you must have quite the heart. Ah, I love a good villain pun, I love it indeed. So, uh, Nightwing does what he does, chucks the escrima stick, but dude catches it, and immediately Nightwing knows he's fucked up. He's like, oh. I've underestimated him and gets whacked in the face with his own weapon and then gets absolutely laid out. Not good for someone that just got shot in the head like a few months ago. However, the incontinuity time works. Um, and so Barbara's asking what's going on. He says, I'm uh, seeing a concerning number of spots for a guy who uh, should avoid more head injuries. This guy's is enhanced. He's fast, he's strong, but that's all. His technique is terrible. He's, uh, he's had upgrades, but hasn't done the work. Like he's trying to take a shortcut to super villainy. And I love it. Our bad guy can only hear Nightwing's side of the fight. And he's like, do you always narrate your fights? Which I love it when that gets called out. I love it when the tropes uh, of comics get called out by the comics. It's very meta humor because we always have our heroes commenting or making dialogue during the fight. And here we have a villain that's like, the hell are you talking about? Shut up and fight me. <laughs> I love it. Um... And Nightwing says, you know, just the boring fights. And the narration for Nightwing says, just have to stay out of his reach and employ counter superhuman techniques, use his momentum and force against him. Uh, doesn't matter how strong he is, he still has to breathe. I can still make him angry and I can still work with that. And of course, the artwork and the layouts here are just absolutely incredible. They've had some really inventive layouts over the past couple issues. I really, really dig it. So Heartless says, oh, you absolute fuck. You know what? It can wait. I can kill you later. And Nightwing says, what is this, an inconvenient time? You think I'm going to let you walk away? And he says, no, uh, of course you'll let me walk away because I know your pathetic weakness. You care, and all the kids have been running towards the pier, which is where I want them. I wanted to see their fear. I wanted to see their faces. Uh, but that's okay. I have a pretty vivid imagination. I love this panel right here with Nightwing reflected in his mask. Oh, chef's kiss artwork plus the colors. Uh, I forgot who did the colors on this. I didn't call it out. Uh, something Lucas. Uh, my apologies. I'll... I'll uh my apologies for not calling out the colors, but it's absolutely amazing. So, of course, Nightwing does what the what the heroes do, what the villains count on the heroes to do. They put the 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 innocent in danger, and the hero runs off to to save the innocent. And we've got. Uh, Robin running the kids all out onto the pier to get away from the fire that you see there uh, on the pier and that's when the docks blow up trapping all of them out there on the edge of the pier where it is now burning of course we got our puppy there barking at the fire good job champ I love the enthusiasm probably not doing a whole lot against the fire but like I said I love the enthusiasm so uh, Nightwing or uh, Robin I'm sorry says Nightwing Oracle we're standing on a burning pier and I need a better option and pushing a bunch of kids into the sea any ideas and then nightwing oh i love it he says uh we ask for help uh oracle maritime distress channel vhf radio 16 she says she's patched in, and he calls out, Mayday, Mayday, there are hundreds of children in need of rescue at the end of Bloodhaven Pier 12. Calls it out again, thinks that Bloodhaven isn't going to uh, respond, and then they finally do. This is the Devon. And then a bunch of other ships call out, and I love these ship names. They say, uh, Roger Mayday, three minutes out. Uh, this is the the Seeley. I know Seeley is a, a creator. Tom Seeley? No, that's not right. I know 
Oh, no, I know Steely is a name. Rick Leonardi, uh, the Dan Jurgens is here. All these um, big name comic creators that have worked on Nightwing in the past. I love it when they put little Easter eggs uh, in there. So we've got all these boats coming in to, to help save the kids. And Nightwing passes out because he, he got punched real hard in the head. And so that's when he wakes up later on in his apartment. Uh, and we find out that the puppy, Haley, has also been nicknamed Bitewing. It's incredible. I love it, and you know, I love it. Nightwing says, uh, that's great, but the puppy actually has a name. Her name is Haley, and then Dick, or, uh, Tim and uh, Barbara are like, yeah, because all the people in this room don't already have two names. The, the puppy can have a hero name, and it, it's the hero name is Bitewing, and it's adorable, and I love it. So uh, Nightwing is trying to catch up now that he's been uh, knocked out, so Tim fills him in and says, the kids are okay. Oh, they're back on the streets, but um, the boats came from everywhere to help it was pretty amazing dick says the people of blood haven have never been a problem it's the criminals and the ones in charge that have always been the problems and barbara says speaking of that uh you're not going to like this the woman boss baroni was talking to yesterday i found out who she is Mayor Zuko, uh, Barbara says, I did uh, some digging while you were unconscious. She's Tony Zuko's daughter from his first marriage, but Tony didn't stick around long past her eighth birthday. Uh, he didn't raise her, and he's like, well, that's positive, and then Tim is like, yeah, she was ma raised by the Maroney crime family, and he's like, oh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I love it. Oh, good, she wasn't raised by a criminal. Oh, wait, she was wor raised by, like, worse criminals. Uh, they find out she's got Got a big old long redacted FBI file, and they're like, "Yeah, people with big old long FBI redacted files um, or redacted FBI files usually aren't aren't up to a whole lot of good." And Dick here says, um, uh, "I wanted, uh, I said I wanted to catch the people who fallen, and I have half a plan uh, for the city. But I hoped I could work with city officials, protecting Bloodhaven from heartless blockbuster Maroni and a criminal mayor makes things a lot harder. I'm gonna play Melinda Zuko a visit, find out what I uh, see, what I can find out about her, and then they're like." Uh, Barbara and Tim are like, uh, no, absolutely not. You need eight hours of rest, you're going to drink a bunch of water, and you're going to chill out, Mr. Head Injury. <laughs> Isn't that uh, one of the running gags from the, the FX TV show Archer, where someone gets knocked down and Archer's always like, that's really bad for you. It, it really is bad for you. I'm not a doctor. I just uh, talk about comics on the internet, but getting knocked out repeatedly is uh is pretty bad for you, especially if you've already taken a bullet uh, to the noggin. So, of course, Nightwing being Nightwing, he can't sleep. He says here, Mayor Zuko, the criminal daughter of the man who killed my parents, is the mayor of my city. There's no way I'm sleeping. So he gets out of bed. Barbara calls him on it like, what are you doing? What the hell are you doing? He's like, uh, I'm resting. And she's like, uh, you know you still have a camera on your suit and I can see you. And he's like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. And she's like, yeah, maybe it's the head injury that because you <laughs> made you forget about it. So he's crawling in the window of uh, Melinda Zuko's place. Oh, and there's Onyx about to take a swipe at him with a sword. Tim, or Dick doesn't see it. Uh, Barbara has to save his ass, and then we see another one of these fantastic layouts as they're um, falling and fighting down the stairs, which leads to Nightwing getting knocked unconscious once again by Melinda Zuko, and then he wakes up, and oh shit, he doesn't have his mask on. She, yeah, he says here, unconscious twice in the same day. That really can't be good for me. No, it's not good for you. Uh, tied up and hang on, I'm not wearing my mask. Zuko, and she's like, Dick Grayson, oh hell, she knows who he is, and then he says, you know me, I know you too, uh, you're, you've worked for the Maroni crime family, you're the daughter of Tony Zuko, and she says, I am not, I thought I was for a long time, but I learned the truth, uh, my real father was named John Grayson, I'm your sister, what, what, Nightwing has a sister? Oh, hell. And just look at them together. They look like brother and sister. What the hell? And I love it. The next one says, The Graysons. Oh, I love this book so much. Damn. It's my favorite DC book coming out right now. Hands down. My absolute favorite DC book coming out right now. Head and shoulders 
over everything else that's coming out. Absolutely amazing stuff. Like I said, this competes with about half of the X-Men stuff that I'm reading, and that is usually right at the top, the cream of the crop for me every week when I get home from the comic shop. This book is straight crazy. It. I cannot wait to meet uh, Melinda Zuko or Melinda Grayson a little bit more as uh, we'll find out her history here over the next couple issues, hopefully. So, guys, I clearly love this series right now. What did you think about it? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments down below, as you guys always do. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, we'll see you at the comic shop.